Hey Pumpkin, I'm on uh, my live stream. Do you have any songs you want to sing? No, why? Because my good friend John Marcus just gave us 1,337 bits. When somebody does that, we sing a song for them. I don't have any songs right now. No? Let me see. I'm going to turn this light on a little bit, see if I can get a little bit going on here. Uh, and I don't have the game up right now. Because I am uh, patching the QA client. Has a ways to go. This is a clean install, so I'm downloading it right now. Hey, and thank you, Double. Thank you, John Marcus. And also, thank you, The Real Black X. <sighs> I may be solo today. I'm pretty sure I'm solo. I asked if anybody wanted to join me on the stream, and I got uh, the crickets. I even did the Bueller. Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> totally fine. As we've seen, uh, a lot of times people get on here and questions come up, which I'm sure you guys are adding questions. Uh, but, uh, and I end up having to a answer them anyway, so I'm going to try to just do rapid fire questions today. Bam, 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 bam. Let's see, I see some questions coming up now, but it's not time yet. We're in the official pre-pro stream, which I really don't care about the exact time, except that we tell people that's the time of the stream, and I don't want to answer questions before people get on who may want to hear the answers to them, so. Do, 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 do. Uh, and I think I'm going to be on, let's see, I think this is now semi-official. Uh, I think I'll be on iWacko stream next Wednesday at 2, I think. We will see. We'll see how uh, vicious he is with grilling me. Ah. Do, 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 do. Uh, just for those who were wondering on the patching, with the, which is why I don't have that up. A hype train already? No, it's too soon! It's too soon! There's got to be a way to adjust that hype train stuff. I'm going to go look and see if I can figure it out. But thank you, Grumpy. And thank you, Alphane, for the host. See, now you put so much responsibility on so few people there. I wonder what, how long until you can have another hype train. Hey, Skeggy, thank you for the, thank you for the raid. Dude, dude, well, it looks like you're going to get through level one. I didn't even see who did what thing. Somebody did a thing. It's good when we get the hype train out of the way up front, though, because then they can just focus on uh, answering questions the whole rest of the time, and I know how to evenly divide up the prizing so that I don't, like, have a pile up at the end. So, uh, and it's now officially four o'clock. And level one completed, which means we're going to be doing at least three prizes. Prizenines. Uh, once again, I think uh, Elgarion will probably, the prizes will probably go out. They may go out tonight, we'll see. Uh, but if not, they'll probably be in by Monday. I think this last time, for those who missed it, uh, you guys had to wait all the way from Friday until Monday to get the prizes. Uh, because people were out of town on holiday stuff. <sighs> oh yeah, let's do the new phrase stuff. Now it's time. I gotta get to my uh, script. Hold on, let me get my script up here. Because yeah, I don't think you guys know what the stuff is. Do 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 do. Today, the phrase is super easy and short. Let it snow. Oh, you guys are twenty eight percent of the way, twenty nine percent of the way to uh, two extra ones. I'd be okay with that. It's a new month, so. There is the phrase. Let it snow is the phrase. 
Do, do, do. All right, and I think we're ready to begin here. For those who don't know why I have the whole screen covered with my ugly face, uh, I am patching up the QA client because I was going to jump on QA, but I made some changes that on at least my local client, I have to do a full repatch of everything. So I'm currently 22%, 23% of the way done here. So I'm just going to do some rapid fire questions until it's time. You guys can admire my lovely fish in the background. <coughs> Come on, 44% of the way, three minutes to go. You can get one more prize. You can be the hero that everybody wants to uh, get them an extra round of prizes. Uh, but while I wait for that, I'm going to go ahead and pull up some questions. I'm trying to think if I have any big news. I don't really think so. Uh, I kind of, I think our new CS person might have said hi. Uh, we're letting them uh, announce themselves however they want to. But uh, we do have a new person, which is great because that lets Elgarion move over and do the stuff he really has been, I think, enjoying more. Uh, not that he doesn't enjoy talking to you guys. Hey, oh, wow. 100%. Man, nice. Nice work here. And I will thank everybody at the end. You guys are uh, doing awesome there, though. But that's two levels. So now i got to do four. So i got to do, uh, I guess every 10 minutes 10 20 30 40 no that's not quite right i guess every 12 minutes 12 24 36 48 how about that unless you're going for three that'll make the math easier uh so anyways next thursday a week from less than a week from uh, now is going to be our team lockdown where this release has been almost entirely bugs we have worked on a few new things. There'll be some new content coming in. Some of the bugs, it's really quality of life stuff. So some minor improvements. I think I mentioned, I tweeted about, uh, man. Looking good there. Going for a thousand. I'm seeing a lot of names pop up. Uh, but I mentioned uh, some quality of life stuff that came in that, uh, hold on, I got to thank people. Thank I already posted about some of the changes to targeting. Some of the easy ones have gone in. That'll be on QA as soon as the QA build finishes. It's running a little bit behind. Uh, the One of those requested features, I think it was requested on here. All right, now you can get it to... You're about to complete Tier 3, which means I can... Level 3 completed. Perfect. Now stop there. Just kidding. If you want to keep giving bits, you can. Uh, but that makes my math easier, at least. Uh, but anyways, but one of the things you guys requested on stream, I got in uh, just earlier today. It'll be in the QA build, which is the connecting, resetting your key for dismount on the horse. So it doesn't always have to be escaped. That's one of those things people complained about. I'm also looking at some more stuff we can do to while you're on the horse. We're 30% done over here, by the way. This may take a while. But anyways, you can now bind a different key for the... Uh, escape stuff. The targeting is another one that's uh, in there. That was actually one that somebody else did. I think Wizard Smoke did that earlier. Uh, but letting you single click target stuff. Again, this is one of the things we talk about internally. Uh, and I think my comment on that was we have some uh, many, many features that like Richard ideas, usually awesome. My ideas, usually awesome. When there's like some compromise made between like somebody's vision for the game, anybody's vision of the game, and anybody else's vision of the game, it frequently ends up being disastrous. I think some of the targeting stuff was a result of that type of compromise of different people wanting different stuff. So that was one of them. And I think that was one that, again, we were all, and you guys probably are too, you're probably just numb to the fact that you have to double click to select stuff rather than single click. Uh, but it's one of those things we get feedback from new players occasionally. And, uh, that's one of the things that they had commented on is I have difficulty selecting things, targeting things. And it was largely because of you got to double click on things, which can be a little hard. So uh, anyways, a bunch of other bugs going in. I haven't kept up. I know at least uh, 40 bugs or something like that closed. Uh, some of them are simpler type bugs, but uh, the, at least a couple, a new, a uh, couple new bosses. One of them, though, is for Well of Alder. So I can give you an update on the Well of Alder while I'm giving updates here, waiting for the client to come up. Uh, so we... It is ready-ish to go live, but after talking to Sanyo and 
uh, list. We're going to push it as soon as live goes live. We're going to push it to QA and let it live on QA for a month. There's a lot of cool stuff. It's one of those things where it could go live now, and it's probably up to the quality of uh, you know mini maps in the game. But we keep coming up with cooler ideas and different things. Uh, oh yeah, they gave me permission to show it if I wanted to. So maybe I should do that. Uh, give me one second to get this synced up and loaded and I can show off some. But I'm trying not to show off too much just because I want to let people discover it on their own. But uh, again, we could have had it, just put it out live now for this release, but there's a lot of tuning that wanted to be done. Sanyo had a lot of more dialogue you wanted to do. Uh, there's also a number of puzzles in it that are uh, at our team meeting that we had yesterday instead of Tuesday just due to some scheduling conflicts. We A bunch of different ideas came up that were things that people were like, oh yeah, oh yeah, we want to do that, we want to do that. And some of them are things like uh, uh, we have... Uh, like breeze zones is one of the things that's going to be going into there. So some of the, imagine having the boss fight, except the boss fight actually, you know, you're fighting it on a windy platform that's elevated, you know, a million feet in the sky. Uh, and there's also a continuous push towards one side of the platform. So uh, it's one that players will have to pay attention to. There's also some things, uh, we'll see if we get it done in time. It'll probably go to the QA at some point. Uh, all, well, Valder will go live to QA immediately after this next release, which is less than two weeks away. But it'll have, uh, there's some things that'll be moving through some different storm clouds and stuff like that that'll have different effects. So you can imagine different effects and mist clouds and stuff going that'll be moving through the scene at different times that have different effects on players and things like, uh, again, moving them around, uh, lightning strikes, uh, focus drain type stuff. Maybe some confusion. I know confusion's a lot less scary than it used to be thanks to some of the changes, but... Uh, Oop of the Veil, I have an old wish list request to be able to root myself. Ooh, that would be nice. That'd be one... Uh, you could root yourself to keep yourself from sliding off. Ooh. Yeah, we'll see. We're going to go play it internally as a team. I've already informed people on the team that they will be playing... They will be helping me go test it. But yeah, torpor is what I was thinking, is do the torpor thing, but I know that's everybody's least favorite. Yeah, that's you root yourself, but you can't do it. All right, I'm adding that to my list of things I'll try and tune up this release. Uh, I saw early on, I saw there's some questions piling up there, which I'll get to shortly. So did, did the stream, did the thing end? So we got level three completed. So that means I got to give away five. So that means 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. <coughs> 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All right, good job. Uh, so that means I need to kick one off here in a minute and then I'm going to start diving into questions. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's any other big news. Uh, I did want to address, since now that I've got a pretty decent audience here, I wanted to address we actually had server downtime. I know a lot of you didn't notice because it happened late at night. Uh, but we actually, one of our, our pro we have, I can go over the main servers. We have a number of big servers uh, that are part of the game. Many of them have redundancies. Our, because it is mission critical that we never lose any data, uh, we actually, we use a, a, a database that's called the NoSQL database. It's MongoDB, uh, one of the bigger well-known databases in the industry. But we keep that one. We actually have a cluster of three of them that all keep the same data. And I, I probably mentioned this before, and that is because we never, you know, we don't want to ever, that's the one thing that we don't want to have happen is have people lose, you know, a day's worth of time or have like, you know, many hours of rollback of uh, time. Uh, it's more than just the lost time. It's also the confusion of did I do something already? I don't know. You know, I'm in the middle of a quest. Where am I in the quest now? Uh, did I craft the things or not? But anyway, so we keep three MongoDBs that are all basically mirrors of each other. Uh, there's basically a primary, a secondary, and then there's a, a tertiary, which is really we just use the tertiary. That's the one we hammer for data whenever we need to, to pull data out of stuff. Uh, but our primary game server, we keep one uh, server up and running. We used to keep two up and running, but we try to keep one up and running so we can manage our, keep an eye on when uh, load gets heavy, but we didn't have a rollover server. We still don't have a rollover server because we don't have an identical server to what the game server is running on. We didn't want to have some weird situation going on. But anyways, uh, long story short, the primary game server, uh, the backplane lost power 
for the IT guys out there. The back plane is basically what the hard drives hook up to. A restart of the machine fixed it, uh, but it was when you have something like that, you know the machine is not long for this world. You rarely, I mean, that machine has operated for for us for five plus years without any problems. <coughs> But anyways, but it is an old machine. I think I mentioned on my stream or on my uh, Twitter that it might be a tween. I think it might be 12 years old. It's a uh, old Super Micro on X5650 uh, Xeon processors. I forget when those even came out, but it's pretty old. But anyways, uh, if you look behind me, I have a new thing behind me, which is actually the server. I can point that down at that. It looks pretty boring, actually. But anyways, that's a new server that's going to go get racked. Uh, that is only a three-year-old server, uh, but uh, should be much more reliable. The other reason I'm picking this particular one is we have an identical one up there, which is what I want for if we're going to have mirrors, we're going to have uh, rollovers, we're going to have anything redundant. So anyways, that'll be racked soon. Uh, so right now we're kind of in the cross our fingers that nothing bad happens to live until that happens. Uh, but the plan is to put that box, let's see if I can point out that box, uh, up there and have it ready so when live if it does have a problem again when it has the problem instead of us being down for two hours like we were last time we'll be down for two to four hours and we'll have everything moved over to that box uh, and we'll basically instead bring the old one back up hopefully we'll just be able to bring that box back up but anyways uh, oh and also have an identical machine up there for it so uh, that's what you guys have to look forward to absolutely meaningless to you but it should be a faster machine as well not that that uh, box that we have up there is you know, cause any performance problems. Uh, but this is uh, like a 32 core or something or another. Should be better. That's the bottom line. Uh, and also, I guess the real bottom line thing I'm trying to get across is we do take server stability and all that stuff very seriously. Uh, no data was lost during the crash, but we did have two hours of downtime, which we really don't like because we pride ourselves on, you know, 99.99% uptime. I think uh, Ravlox did the math and said we're still there. Okay, I've talked too much. Now let me start apprising and start answering some questions. Do, 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 do. And yes, that is how I set up our server stuff. So I just drag it into my office and set it up in front of the fish tank. Hold on, getting the prizing going. If I can find it. Got it. Okay. I'll just run two back to back there. Uh, let it snow is the phrase, and now I'm going to jump into some questions. Dr. L asks, is it intended that Savage, Sonata, and Anthem of Lacrity stick to the area they are cast on instead of moving with Bard? No, and I, uh, I have the fact or fix for that. Uh, it's just a, we need to change the pattern of how some of those things are cast and created, and we're going to be moving those to behave as you would expect them to, where they travel with the Bard. Uh, there's and again there's a couple of them. Those may be the only two. Hold on. Uh, but no, that is not intended. Uh, that will get some love. Yes, Bard is still on the hundred percent return experience because there are some still balance issues or some balance issues. I'm probably gonna be making another change to the math for mesmerizing. I know that some people can still mez things they shouldn't be able to mez. Uh, I will probably just put in a hard flag that says bosses cannot be mezzed, mesmerized. <clears throat> we do know which bo creatures are bosses. Let's see, uh, Grumpy. Ask, can we get the ability to save dungeon rooms in our property manager to not lose deco when we rearrange the dungeon? Uh, so that's one that's a little bit tougher, but there is actually a system where it's still, uh, we have it in the queue, but it, I don't see it happening in the next few months. We've already got enough stuff that I think is more critical to everybody, including newer players. That's kind of more of an in-game thing, but that's the uh, kind of letting players make prefabs out of stuff. Uh, when I say prefabs, that's a term that we use in Unity, but I mean it's used in a lot of game engines where you can take, rather than having a single object, you can put a bunch of objects together and turn them into a prefab. Uh, dungeon decorations, for those who don't know, actually dungeon rooms, for those who don't know, are actually kind of an extension of a decoration. Uh, we use that same system since we knew we had a rock solid system for placing decos and you know items on decos and how all that system works and the hierarchy and all that jazz. 
So those are actually specialized decos that you know just have more functionality than dungeon rooms. Now, what the one of the things we're planning again still though is having the ability to prefab, which is you can combine a bunch of objects together. And some of these are for things like right now it's Christmas time. Hey, it'd be great if I could just take last year's Christmas tree that already had like you know snow patches around and uh, forty present boxes all around as decos, and take all that stuff and just turn that into say like pre-made Christmas tree and put that away so that next year I can just pull it out and uh, not have to do that all again. So it's that type of stuff, letting you guys combine multiple things together. That's another thing that we have most of what we need for. We just don't have it all pulled together tightly. Obviously you can, you know, you can put objects in objects. This is just gonna be a way that we can handle, you know, serialize out the whole uh, tree. It's one of those things where we really want it. We know you guys want it and it would allow for a lot of things like hey here's a dungeon room that i decorated and i can just take the whole freaking dungeon room and say make this into a you know a prefab you know and then store the dungeon room off and then put that whole dungeon room decoed already in place uh but it's also one that's a little bit scary anytime we talk about item things that take items out of you know inventory or put them into inventory or take them out of the bank put them into the bank whatever we try to be super duper crazy over the top careful with you guys because that's another thing we are, we try to be really good. We haven't quite been perfect, but we try to be really, really good on making sure you guys don't lose items. Uh, there's only been a handful of lost items uh, issues, and most of them are not widespread. Mo the t most common one is uh, still the, I lost a deco, and you know we go and look, and it's like, oh, well, it's 30 feet under your house somehow. Uh, that type of loss. It's not really loss, it's just you can't see, you can't get to it, so... Uh, but again, that's one of the things we're looking at, and that would allow for kind of what you're talking about, where you could take a dungeon and pre-make the dungeon. Here's the, you know, the the big hexagon room that I want to have, you know, the spider room with all the decos in it, and here's the, you know, the grand hall or whatever that one put in there, and all the decos in it, so you could swap things around like that. Uh, then the other thing that uh, I'd mentioned about that before is once that system goes into place, that'll be really cool, because then you could also have ways that you could, like, you know, put that on your vendors. Here's a fully decorated room or whatever. Uh, the challenge with that, though, of course, is the person wouldn't be able to see what the room is until they actually bought it and put it out there. But could be some uh, issues with that. Let me jump in since we have to go through five, count them, five giveaways today. Uh, first one up is Yule Card 2018 five pack goes to Mogul Razdunk. Winter Pattern Glass Floor Lamp goes to three, or three pack goes to Dulane Mavaro. Ornate Sled goes to. Genevieve Belmont, Ornate Replenishing Snowball Box 2015 goes to VX. Uh, I see Ancient Stone Cathedral. Oh, that's a pretty one. Goes to, hey, an old friend, Elwyn Moon. Congratulations, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and kick another one of those off because it's almost time again uh, and jump into the next question. Let's see. And keep those questions coming. I think I probably have... Uh, plenty here but I'm trying to get through a bunch let's see and uh, grumpy you're saying the ability to save dungeon rooms in our property manager to not lose uh, this would the thing I was just talking about would let you save dungeon rooms as a chunk and then you can take that whole chunk and put it in there you know to help rebuild your dungeon because I don't think it's the putting the dungeons together uh, that's as big of a problem as it is like the decorations we all know how much time that takes but that's kind of I mean that's part of the fun for a lot of people uh, but it would also, if we do it right, because those are decorations, and you think about dungeon rooms, like you think about, I put a dungeon room down, and I go in and I decorate, and I put another dungeon room down the other side, or a hallway or whatever. Well, that's really, that hallway is really a kind of a attached dungeon to, you know, deco to that piece. So it's something that it could be just, you know, take like a whole dungeon section if we if we do it right. We probably will not do it right because that ends up getting complicated and confusing and scary for people. And then we get stuff like, I stored away my dungeon, but I tried to put it back out now and it doesn't work. And it's like, well, because it's got some overlap. And then we got to give you guys, you know, overlap with another dungeon hallway or something because you put a big chunk of a dungeon down. Uh, and then we have, to, you know, it's a nightmare. But anyways, good question. Uh, Neil Archer, how is the 15k daily experience bonus divided between our avatars on the account? Asking because I don't see it added to any XP totals. That's a good question. For those who don't know, we used to have a uh, experience on characters was the experience pools was shared, which had some convenience to it, uh, and I know some people like that, uh, but it also had some caused some exploit 
slash we got to change a bunch of design stuff, uh, core design stuff to, to avoid some handful of people exploiting it. Uh, so I actually don't know which account. 81% uh, done. We're almost there on patching. Uh, so I actually don't know. I would think it would go to the first character on the account. I don't think it, I know it doesn't get divided between them. It may just go to whichever character happened to log in, you know, first that day. So uh, maybe somebody else in chat knows, but that would be my guess is it would either be the first account or it would be the account that logs in. Uh, Treewalk, when do you plan on reading the article and watch the video on attenuation so soda calc or on soda calc to stop penalizing players for playing your game? Uh, so attenuation again, I've been pretty open on this. I don't want attenuation either, but it's one of those things until we have time to do more balance work, I think it's the best uh, option. Like for instance, right now that's one of the things I should have fixed for this release is some of the experience explosions that happen and some of the uh, uh, versions of uh, Spindle Skog and a few other places where you can literally get, you know, 5 million experience points in 10, 10 minutes of play through some, you know, somewhat challenging, but not that challenging stuff. Until we can fix some of those things and get those things back in line so they're more in where we expect them to be experience wise, which again, I do hope to have a number of those done this next release, but attenuation is still the best, the safest option for us. I wish we had a bigger team and had like time to go and tune every little bit and try to make sure all that stuff happens and respond to it super quick. Uh, but it does go pretty slow. And it's also one that once I, I, I mean, just because I've done this a number of times, I go and I fix, balance some areas. Uh, some might call it nerfing some areas. Really, it's usually I'm not adjusting the experience down. I'm adjusting the difficulty for the creatures up, which is technically the same thing. Uh, but it does feel, you know, I killed 20 guys last time and I got a million experience points. Well, you kill 20 guys this time, you get a million experience points, but it just takes a little longer to kill the 20 guys because they have a little more resistance or, you know, their damage resistance starts working. Uh, but I would love to actually do away with attenuation. Again, my goal for attenuation is that it becomes the flashing red light boop, 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 uh, in my office uh, that when someone actually exceeds the attenuation number, you know, rather than it being they stop getting experience points, I get a flashing light that says somebody has found a way to do way better than we expect them to do. And that's kind of where I would like attenuation to be. I know we're nowhere near that right now. Uh, but again, it's not, I'm not trying to penalize the players. The thing I'm trying to do is not penalize the players because they want to choose the areas, which means, you know, we we all, I can look at the charts and see the areas that are way way grossly over experienced, and I want to make sure those get pulled down some, uh, so that the when you reach attenuation, that's kind of the peak. If you're doing really well, that's kind of where you get, and then you know there'll be some players who get beyond that. So uh, once we have a full pass done, which again I'll get some done this release. I don't know if it'll be fully, but I'll turn up the attenuation and see if people are still hitting it. <clears throat> but it's also again small team. We don't like doing rollbacks. Uh, we have seen a few places where, you know, some horrible, you know, balanced thing comes out that if we hadn't had attenuation there, that would have been crazy experience in somebody's, you know. And then as soon as that happens, then I get to hear people screaming about <clears throat> uh, how I can never catch up. I can never catch up. They've got uh, such a huge, I'll never catch up. That's, I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that and I hate it every time I hear it. But I would like to make it not something that people feel like they, you know, that they need to say. I, I don't like to hear the, I can never catch up. Uh, but I also understand all the frustration of feeling like you're bouncing against a wall. So, yes, I agree. Attenuation sucks, but it's the lesser to suck things. So, uh, <coughs> Radicus 2 k asks, how are the new quest and theater systems coming along? They're coming along slowly. Now is when we should have been working on them, but we're really trying to hammer down a bunch of bugs. Uh, we started talking about whether or not we should be doing so. some of those. The theater system actually is a pretty small system. That probably will get done pretty quick. The quest system has moved pretty slowly just because we fixed so many problems in the old one. We're still in the, you know, we may end up just fossilizing the old system rather than uh, having it be completely new. We continue to make chunks on it, but it was also when you hit when we hit the October time frame, and we had October was already full of stuff to do. 
you already know that November and December are going to be scattered, you know, chunks of time as people take vacations. And that's not a great time for working on a super important big feature. Uh, the theater system will probably happen and be live to you guys before then. The quest system is going to be one that continues to evolve. Uh, we have been, we actually, the old system has gotten better in terms of bugs uh, due to wizard smoke has continued. Anytime we've had a bug, he's been freaking amazing as he always is of uh, going and trying to identify what led to the bug, whether it was a tool problem, whether it was a data problem, whether it's, you know, is it something we can just fix across the board? 97% done on the patch. Uh, so he's actually done a good job of improving that. I'm going to run a second prize inning here, and then I'm going to read off two prize innings back to back. <coughs> uh, so the theater system, again, that's one that we were kind of, we looked at it and broke it down in chunks, and we're continuing to add in the chunks, which those are coming along quickly. Uh, it's just how we roll it out as the theater system to you guys. Do, do, do. Ooh, Gwendolyn Obscuro uh, asked a good question here, and then I'm going to go read some prizes. Just wondering how many of the framed map recipes have made it into the game so far. I have found eight or nine so far, and I'm enjoying collecting them. I thought there were over 20 map recipes. I thought there was like, I'm going to throw out a number and say 24. I think. Uh, maybe somebody knows differently, but uh, uh, they're out there. All of them are in 26. There you go, 26. Oh, I think what I'm thinking of is he put two in initially and then he added 24 more. I remember him saying 24 more just went in, so. So there you go. I'm sure somebody will have a wiki page up on them soon. Uh, I don't think they're that rare in the locations. It's kind of more just, it makes you, you know, it's kind of the tour of, uh, of the world of new and old Novia stuff. Or New Britannia stuff. <coughs> so yeah, Gwendolyn, you need to get to uh, work a little more on that. Let's see. Let me go check to see what uh, the prize is. Let me read off two more sets of prizes here. Uh, by the way, there will probably, I know our script has bugs in it. There will probably be at least one or two dupes. I don't see any right now. But somebody's name may get called twice, and we'll just call it twice probably. Uh, because I will be giving away five, so five times five, 25 prizes there for, uh, I'm not sure how many people are doing it in game. I mean, obviously there's like 150 here, but, uh, more people do it in game. So we'll see. But the second round of prizes, actually, I'm going to read these off two names at a time for the second and third round of prizes. So the Yule card 2018 five pack goes to Sean Silverfoot and... Another to Azurion Dufresne. The Winter Pattern Glass Floor Lamp 3-pack goes to Griselda the Hag. And also to Rook Strife. The Ornate Sled goes to Sorgan Toxical and Sage Red, Red Hammer. The Ornate Replenishing Snowball Box 2015 goes to Red McMiner and Scarface. Uh, I see Ancient Stone Cathedral goes to Charis Knight Diamond and McCorgan Kaladin. Congratulations. We got two, two more rounds of those to go, by the way. Uh, I'll do one in uh, 10 minutes and one in about 20 minutes. Actually, I'll probably forget about both of them and do them right at the end. But for now, let me get back to some questions. Getting some good questions here. I haven't skipped a single question yet, by the way. Aren't you proud of me? Uh, let's see. Can you please explain what adventure level actually does and why it is... Why is it that I do more damage crit to green enemies compared to red? If I get an adventure buff, I perform better against enemies that used to be red to me and are now yellow. Uh, you shouldn't. Uh, I've done searches through the code on past streams, so there's only, oh, I'm trying to remember. There's uh, there's two things, I forget what the second one is, but one is hit or health. There isn't any more, there used to, I think there's a, a long time ago there was a, basically a to hit chance that was based on your level. 
those are your level relative to the other guy's level, uh, the, the NPC's level, not for PvE, but for NPCs. And if you were more than, I think it was more than 40 levels below the NPC you were fighting, you had a reduced hit chance. That's been long gone. There shouldn't be any difference uh, except in your imagination. Uh, so really, uh, the adventure level is just there to kind of show a, prog a bigger, you know, a larger scale progress bar than experience, gaining experience. And it is also there to, you know, so you slowly increase your max health over time. Uh, but again, once you get up to the higher levels, you know, 100 plus, the difference in health is not that great. We didn't want to make, uh, you know, grinding make it so some players are insurmountably more powerful than others or something. Uh, it's not that great. And it's also a very exponential curve in terms of how much experience it takes. So there is some, but again, we've talked about before that there's really kind of multiple le levels of uh, diminishing returns on things. All right. I got the QA build here. Uh, so adventure level buffs are not trash. Because they make you look cool. Uh, but they also add to your base health and your base focus. So those are two obviously very important things. Hold on, I gotta get the game captured there. Yes, that's right, that one. Why are you not showing up? There you are. Oh, and I still haven't done the thanks. I, you guys did uh, amazing. I couldn't believe you guys did a three, completed three levels there. Let me get in and do some quick thank yous. While I wait for this login, then I'll jump back into some more questions. Well, you know what? I haven't published the server yet. There may be a few things that are wonky here. Uh, this was me in Snug Harbor. That's one of the bugs I've been looking at that is tedious to debug and figure out. Uh, but it is the, why can't I place my some decos on the docks or something like that in a, in a pot. Uh, but I'm working through those. That was the last thing I was working on before I basically started pulling my hair out. So I'm trying to get that working for you. Let me go in and thank you guys while I wait for that. Uh, in fact, yeah, you can look. I've been trying to get this turkey to move on to the dock. Move on to the dock, turkey. That's where I was at. Uh, and I was just using uh, Lazarus Long's map because I think he might have been the one that reported it and reported a location, so I just teleported to it. So, uh, But let me go thank some people, lots of people, all sorts of people. I know I owe lots of people thanks. Uh, let's see. Wait, how did this happen? A moldy potato just followed me one minute ago? Are you sure? Are you unfollowing me out of rage or something? Uh, Mondravis, thank you for the follow as well. Puddlefoot21, thank you for the subscription. Puddlefoot20, and thank you for the follow. Man, 2 to 1. Uh, for those who don't know if you're watching the stream and you're not uh, a follower, the only thing for the... Oh, that's uh, that's for the prizes. You don't even have to do anything. You don't have to follow. You should follow, though. I was going to say, when I give away prizes using my internal tool, uh, you have to follow. Uh, but Puddlefoot, thank you very much for the follow and the sub. Uh, Shadow Vice, again, thank you. Sean Paxlayer, many times I see in there. Uh, Aob Neal, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ihandis, thank you. Eight, 19 months. I think that may be the limit. That may be the most I've seen on somebody. I'll watch. I'll see if anybody else has more than that. Do Umund, thank you for the follow, as well as Edimus54. Blaze Garcink, thank you for the bits. A moldy potato, man, you're all over the place, moldy potato. Lily Bird, thank you. Holly Hawk, man, giving up five. Thank you very much, Holly Hawk. Another name I've seen forever. Thank you, Cryogenix Z. Thank you for the uh, for the sub. Mad Chef of Xenos, I still love that name. Uh, speaking of Xenos, there's going to be a dance party later tonight in Xenos. Uh, that is uh, going to be. Let's see. I'll just read the thing to you. The Beat of Novia will be in Xenos at the Rotunda of the Ancients. That is a pretty cool spot. That's one of my favorite spots in the game. And the Sister City to Immortal City. Show is at 8 to midnight. Join us or tune in on Avatars Radio on the Dial Game. Virtue Radio on the web. Uh, simulcast on Eileen Dragon's Twitch channel. 
cowbell giveaway. That's the important part. You can get a cowbell. But anyways, that's tonight. That's in Zeno. Speaking of the chef of Zeno, since that name came up and reminded me. Let's see. Drinbrand, thank you for the bit. Shaner Niner, you're always freaking amazing, dude. You set the bar pretty high, as well as a, a moldy potato. Man, another thousand bits in there. I think you guys were, like, seeing you can just barely get to that next platinum. Yeah, barely get to the next one. You guys uh, also remember that we give out more prizes for depending on what levels you get to. So these are the real heroes. Okay. Maybe, maybe not. But it's pretty awesome of them anyways. The original smelly, grumpy Crab Navir. Uh... I have Neil Skeggy Media, John Marcus. Oh, I owe John Marcus a song. Uh, I will punish you guys at the end with that. Red Hammers, Grumpy, John Marcus, some more. Oh, John Marcus has 21 months, so I guess that's longer. The Real Black Axe. Uh, and, oh, and that's uh, it for the stream. So you guys did great, fabulous, amazing. Uh, let me get back to the questions now. And I have not had time to read anything going in chat. I can barely keep up uh, with my talking here. Oh, to get off, I always talk about some stuff other than game stuff, but uh, the Longhorns. Woohoo! Uh, since I'm an Austin guy, I support the uh, Longhorns, but their basketball team looked good. But, oh my goodness, uh, I was just reminding myself of uh, Bill Walton doing the calls for the Longhorns. I don't know if anybody watches uh, men's basketball, college basketball, but oh, Bill Walton, I cannot stand him. Oh. He just talks and talks and talks, and it has nothing to do with the game 90% of the time. He's talking about, like, books you read, and he went hiking once, and what. I was just reminding myself of him, but at least I'm talking about the game for the most part. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let me get in here. Uh, the Mad Chef of Xenos. Is there any plan to add rare weapon components to be salvageable? From Kabold Weapons. I have some exciting news on this. This is another one I mentioned earlier that we have a new CS person uh, who's going to be taking over a lot of the stuff that uh, uh, Elgarian was doing, and that is largely because Elgarian's been doing amazing and he's been doing great on like learning how the crafting system fits together. Uh, Bezos has been uh, tutorial, giving him the tutorial on uh, how stuff goes together. So you can expect a lot more of that stuff going in. I think there's some more patterns coming in this release and a lot of other stuff that he's done that I don't know how to do. I need to get it and figure it out too. Uh, but it's great that he's in there because I think he kind of shares a similar mindset and understands the game. Uh, you know, a lot of parts of the game probably better than I do uh, just because he spent more time actually in the game and probably spent more time listening to you guys. Like actually having conversations with you. I go through and I answer all your questions, but... I don't get to have too many dialogues. It's more of a uh, you put up questions and I answer monologue. But anyway, so yes, you can expect a lot more salvageable stuff coming. Uh, it's still the plan for artifacts to also get stuff in there. That may be something that he ends up tackling. So that I can work on new code parts and new systems and work on code bugs and leave that type of data stuff to him uh, just because he's been doing so great. Uh, but making it so you can break down different things, artifacts and such, and get parts out of those that are going to be used and again that's part of the plan is to have that be the basically you can get rather than just having the gems you can have gems that you get from salvaging uh pieces that you can then use again uh it'll open up a ton of options for crafters uh i know it's one of those things that probably a bunch of people will be upset uh but i think a bunch of people will be upset for a you know probably good reason which is like now i gotta get new gear my get new gear. and that's uh, another one of those things that we may uh, work on is making gear more uncraftable and yeah he knows what players want for sure and again he's really good at talking to you guys but uh and he's going to be doing that pretty much as his full-time job moving forward we're continuing to move stuff off we have somebody new doing the newsletter doing most of the cs stuff <coughs> uh probably even delivering prizes now so which is awesome Uh, there was talk of adding episode two access to the Kodo store. Is that still on the table? Yes, uh, I actually have that on there. I'm not sure why we haven't done that. I would love to do that. For those who uh, were living in a cave and missed it, I guess it wouldn't be a cave. You may have been on Thanksgiving vacation. We had a little sale over Thanksgiving, uh, the Black Friday sale. And uh, we always, I always try to make sure our sales, one of the problems we have when we do sales is we love doing sales and giving you guys, you know, discounts to buy stuff and of course the biggest thing is discount on crowns to buy crowns 
It's one of those love-hate things because we get a lot more sales when that happens. But we also, I can see the, hey, look, you guys spent this much on the crowns. You bought this many crowns. You spent less than that. And we get this, I always call it the sale hangover where more crowns go out into the world and get spent. So I know you guys are sitting on them hoarding them or whatever you uh, you do. Uh, so it leaves us with a hangover afterwards where, you know, of course we get big sales and then we get uh, the dip below. You know, and it's a net positive for us. And I know it's a net positive for you guys, uh, which is the important thing. But having that, that in the crown store uh, would be a great thing to have is having the $19 thing. We looked at it. It's one of those things... Uh, I think we can do it. The challenge for it is it's one of the those rare components that ties back into the store and you can see your, do I have episode two access? And I, actually I'm playing through in my mind what the conversation was uh, with uh, when we had the last team meeting where we talked about this is because the store wouldn't know, we have to get ways to get it back to the store and really everything is kind of a one-way street you know, it goes from the website stuff that happens on our web store, like the web page stuff. It gets set and the game pulls that data, but we don't push any data from the game back to the website of things. Uh, so it's really kind of a one-way street. And that one-way street creates the problem of someone can buy the, the game episode two access in game. And I know these are long answers for questions. I could just say yes, no. Uh, but anyways, I think it's important you guys understand some of these things and some of them I have to talk to myself. But you could buy it in game, and then you could go to the website, forget, like, oh, I got three accounts, and this account doesn't have episode two access. I better buy it. And then you buy it there, and then it's like, now I've paid for it twice. And that's one that maybe we just live with. Uh, but we don't, there's not a great, we try to keep our data, and this is again for security reasons and a number of other reasons. It's actually for uh, GDPR reasons, the uh, European security stuff. We try to minimize the, the interactions make sure interactions are kind of a one-way street when can but anyways uh, but yes that's absolutely on the table and maybe that's when we just uh we could add a second flag to it uh but we may just have to trust you guys to, guys to know don't buy it a second time but it will become a cs issue and that's kind of what shot it down last time but we got a new cs person so we can like boss them around and just tell them you're gonna deal with it we wouldn't do that uh Let's see. Mad Chef of Xenos, are there any plans to add more skills to the cooking tree? There's more plans on adding skills to all the trees. Uh, cooking is definitely one of them. Uh, again, as I just mentioned a minute ago, I'm doing a lot. But as I mentioned a minute ago, the uh, uh, Elgarion is taking over a lot of the crafting stuff, and that's one that he could he could definitely you know manage and add those in. The cooking, I'd probably have to do some of the skill parts. But uh, again, with those, a lot of those crafting skills, you know, adding the skill is easy. The tough part is now I got to go change a thousand pieces of data, and none of them are things that we can just like apply a formula to it or run some batch process to change them. It's all like each one needs to be thought about a little bit. So, so yes, but that is now that we've got basically another full time designer on the project. That's stuff you guys can expect. Tons more stuff coming. I think uh, again, we already saw somebody was talking about one of the things he did, which. Nobody asked him to do it. He just one day contacted me on chat and was like, uh, I added, turned all those maps into, you know, things to put out there and he threw them out there and he did all the crafting side and the, the loot bundle stuff and all everything. It's freaking amazing. <sighs> Let's see, John Marcus, how about deco flip key assignments? I can never get that to work right. Let's see. Uh, is that a key? Again, uh, I think people know I, you know, I touch a lot of parts of the game, but deco is one of those things I embarrassingly don't know. I don't do much of. I've decoed my own house, and I think some people have seen how I decoed my own house. <sighs> Got to go hire the uh, deco divas or something to do that. Deco flip. Uh, does N not work? It's R. Uh, but this is the important one down here that you guys should pay attention to. Which is, we I can ride my horse. And of course, you can't see my keyboard. But now if I hit escape, I get off my horse. I know this is really exciting. Uh, but now if I want to do, I'm going to make control D. 
I dismount. And I dismount. Or uh, pull out the horse. Uh, escape no longer dismounts me. Now it pulls up the menu. And that's one that, uh, again, I started doing that. And uh, I didn't end up doing it because it was causing some breakage. Trying to keep, like, escape or adding a toggle for it. And, I, again, I'm trying to make sure it's friendly for new users coming in. I know you guys all want it to work a certain way. But everybody wants it to work a certain way. Uh, but anyway, so this is now... You know, escape doesn't do it now. Control D does it. If you could see my hands, you'd know what I was doing. But you don't want to see my hands because my desk is filthy, as my wife keeps pointing up. But anyways, that's uh, in there. Yeah, it looks like the flip thing is already there, John Marcus. It never worked. Deco key, Deco flip UI key assignment was never connected in game. All right. Well, that's uh, good to know. Uh, I did want to also compliment. Obviously, we're not. Uh, it's not perfect, but the bug brigade stuff uh, is freaking going amazing. It's been fabulous. Some mornings I just get up and I'm brain dead and you know just want to go and like I'm just gonna go fix some whatever bugs, some little crappy bugs, rather than work on a new feature because I know if I code a new feature, I'll just have to recode it because I'm half brain dead sometimes. Uh, but being able to go and have like here's a queue of bugs that are all verified, recent updated good notes and i know uh, i think i saw ihandis out there somewhere actually i read his name off earlier so i know he's out there somewhere uh but he's one of the guys on that number of the guys ali oop you're amazing if you're out there uh but that is making a huge difference not just to the team in terms of team happiness because i, I know it sounds weird to say that that uh, that type of stuff can affect team happiness but when you have like a bug list what we had before was like here's a thousand bugs None of them really verified, just the player said something happened, and so many times it is, yeah, they might have had it happen, but it was magic sauce is missing, like there's some special thing that has to happen, like it only happens if you're over encumbered, or it only happens if you're low health, or it only happens if you're playing a female character, or it only happens if you're in this zone, uh, or it only happens if you've died recently, you know, all those type things where we go and we try to reproduce the bug to go in and fix it, and we're just like, this is crap. Uh, but anyways, but it's actually so much better to have a list of bugs where, you know, our confidence is high where we can like, this is a bug, it happens, I know somebody uh, has reproduced it and has good steps there, so. Anyways, thank you guys, you're freaking amazing. <coughs> ah. Only happens inside of 10. Yes. But anyways, it's great having that uh, people out there who dig into it and kind of understand the concept of like, you know, just because somebody reproduced it once doesn't mean it's reproducible. And to have a dev waste an hour working on a bug that can't be reproduced is a huge drain on the project. So, awesome, guys. Uh, let's see. I'm about to go past do exactly what I said, which is not have the prizing for 40. So, I'll go ahead and run the prizing twice. Actually, I'll run it once now, then I'll run one at the end. So, to make sure I get everybody. I gotta keep drinking my hot tea. My allergies are killing me. No, it's not. It's not the coronavirus. Uh, that reminds me. Before we get to the end of the stream, I have to tell you there. Be safe out there. The numbers are uh, crazy on the Corona stuff. Again, the home for the holidays sale I put out there was. I didn't really emphasize it that much, but a lot of it was like, please stay home for the holidays. Uh, just numbers are crazy. The uh, we just had my wife's uh, best friend. Her whole family. Her kid went to school. I think she was just losing her sanity and ended up stopped doing remote schooling and send the kids to school so she could have, you know, a few weeks off. And guess what? Some a kid came home uh, with the coronavirus. And, of course, he's a kid and he barely knows he had anything. But the rest of the family noticed uh, and all five of them were infected. So, anyways, be safe out there. Take it seriously. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. All that, all that jazz. Uh, happy to see, like... Vaccines are basically in the mail right now, so still take a while to get out there, but be safe out there. All right, I'll stop talking about real world stuff now. Ah, let's see. Let me read off some prizes. I'm going to save the last one for the end of the stream to make you stay so you're a little closer to hearing me sing. Uh, Yule Card 2018 five pack goes to Kathy Earnshaw. Winter Pattern Glass Floor Lamp 3-pack goes to Michael Berg. Ornate Sled goes to Dark. 
He has two A's in his name, that's why I make, said it that way. Uh, ornate Replenishing Snowball Box 2015 goes to Rage! Uh, Icy Ancient Stone Cathedral goes to Blaze Garcink. Is he the first one? Is he a dupe? No, I think I probably called his name out earlier when I was thanking people for bits and stuff. So, uh, Congratulations. There will be one more round at the end uh, of the stream. I'll do it right at 6 o'clock, which is only like 9 minutes away, so I better go answer some more questions real quick. Pew. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chowmin26, can we have shopping from horseback on vendors? Yes, that is in the plan. I expect to have that live for this release. Uh, I started. That's another one I started looking into, but I did not get it to a point where I fully understood that. And it's uh, the when you start getting into horseback stuff, it's, there's a lot of states and movement states and state stuff in there. It's one of those I try not to... I try not to make any quick changes on that stuff because it can lead to some really ugly bugs uh, that are hard to re hard to duplicate. Uh, but I think it's totally safe. So yes, you can expect to be able to shop from vendors. I'm hoping to get some more like emote stuff, casting simple spells from from horseback so you can cast a light. Uh, again, I'm sure some people are trying to cast their uh, movement spells or whatever from horseback. So let's see. Uh, can you share if creature rework will make certain less desirable tanes more competitive if higher tier versions are added to episode 2 scenes? There will be uh, probably one more tier above what we currently have in terms of taming. Uh, my current, and again, you guys can call me on this, but my current belief from watching some people, I spy on people. Uh, but I also get feedback from some people I trust, is that uh, tame creatures right now, uh, their toughness is right up there. They're, you know, they're up there with the tanks and being able to handle stuff and can actually handle some there what falls behind is if you're really a serious tamer is their dps doesn't measure up and that's probably a thing so there will probably be another tier of tame stuff out there tameables out there uh, but it will probably not increase their toughness significantly uh, it will increase their dps or give them additional special abilities so what is that what do you guys think Immolation work from horseback? Oh, what? Fixing that. <laughs> uh, taming is way too strong. I think taming is, again, I, like I said, I think taming is strong. Uh, I do think it's tamed. The problem, the, one of the challenges, and this is another one that I've looked at, at fixing, is at higher levels, you know, higher level players who are not tamers still are more powerful they have more flexibility of course hammers can be both but it does add some stuff the problem the bigger challenge i think the bigger part where it feels like it's way too powered is overpowered is a low level player can come into the game by a really high level tame creature uh, and that feels super powerful to them uh, they can use power level themselves again i think it is i think they have too much health right now their durability like they may be too tough but i just don't think they're dps when i look at dps people now it is to at least some extent and in addition to thing uh, so I can't go too crazy on it but uh, that's kind of where and then this is something I've known for a while and I believe for a while and that's why when you've seen me making tuning on the tame stuff the thing I'm trying to do more than like just like your tame creature now does 50% more DPS is make it so there's skills you can use to make your creature tougher for some amount of time. And again, this is trying to make it so you're choosing the trade-off. If you want to be the tamer and you want to be the awesome tamer, you're the guy using lots of taming skills rather than your, you know, tame guy go, you know, go fight whatever I want, bear, and then I'm going to totally ignore you and not do anything. I want to make it so, you know, not ignore him, not do anything. You're going to be sitting there nuking him or whatever. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want that guy who doesn't really do any taming skills during combat to get more powerful. What I want is the guy who is a tamer, has a good tame pet, knows what he's doing, and is using skills, is choosing new taming skills, he can actually boost his DPS. So, anyways, that's my uh, belief. Even pure pet DPS can get incredibly powerful, especially with bard skills. Yeah, and bard skills is another one that is pretty... I mean, we know Savage Sonata needs to be taken down a notch. I have taken it down a little, a little bit. It'll probably get taken down a little bit more, uh, but... Uh, 
we'll see. But yeah, I'm trying to get them to basically, again, I always talk about this, but the thing I don't want is I don't want it to be not a choice that you can do. I can be the best tamer in the world and the best wizard in the world and the best fighter in the world. I'm okay with that if you want to be the best in any of them. I just don't want you to be the best in all of those at the same time. Uh, so that's making you choose to spend your time, spend your toolbar, spend your focus. Really, Taming doesn't use hardly any focus, but spend your toolbar, spend your time casting, executing, paying attention to, you know, spending your attention on your pet uh, to make it more powerful. So, again, could have been a five second answer. You got the long version. Ah. <sighs> Let's see. Jivare. Do, 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 do. Oh, this is one I'm trying to remember the answer to this. Because uh, it's one I went back and forth on in the design. If I only have one adventure skill training, will it gain more experience on each use or will it just use up less experience pool? I think it uses more, it gains, that skill gains more. I'm trying to remember, that's one I went back and forth on. It's stuff that I haven't touched in a year or two. Uh, you guys may know for sure, but I believe if you... I, so there's kind of two things. For the newer players, for you, those who don't know, if you're only working on one skill at one time, it absolutely will gain experience faster. Because the other skills aren't going to be draining your pool. And the more experience you have in your pool, the more experience gets applied to things. The detail I'm trying to remember for sure is if I have three skills training... The exact, you know, one million experience points in my pool and I have three skills training and I use them, something does, do the others steal experience points off? I'm thinking it, oh, I'm trying to remember. I think it may only pull off of, uh, it may split the experience between all the skills that are training that are going to get experience applied to them. Because as you know, like some, you don't get experience in fireball uh, for using your sword or whatever. So I think and the skills that do get applied, I think the experience gets split between those. You guys probably know more than me. <laughs> I think that's right. Uh, but that's uh, yeah. Again, if you if you're if you're a new player, you don't know what you're doing, and you're trying to train like ten skills at once, they're absolutely going to train faster. Guarantee that. It's just a matter of whether or not, uh, because it'll empty your pool, your experience pool faster. So if you want to train, the short version is if you want to train a skill and you want to make sure you get that one up higher, train one skill. But I do think it when you use a skill. It figures out what skills get experience applied to them uh, with the use of that skill, which will really be probably that skill, maybe one other skill in that tree, and then a bunch of passives in various places, and then it divides the experience on those. So, again, if you don't know, passives are the thing that will drain your experience pool really fast. So, if you're trying to work on your, you know, piercing shot or whatever, work on your piercing shot, try not to do too many passives. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Uh, it is 5 o'clock. Let me do the last prizing. I'm going to answer one more question. And then I will torture you with a song on the way out. Thanks to John Marcus. Uh, let's see. <coughs> uh, Eileen Dragonfire asked one here that I'll answer, and it is a bonus answer. Which is, why can't I use the Disco and Grow potions in Xenos? Uh, I think that's one that was a decision I was in favor of making those work. Uh, but uh, at the time, people talked me out of it, and I think I'll go switch that out right now. Those are There's some potions that can only be used in pots, and I think those are some in pots. And I think that was to prevent, the idea was to prevent people from using some potions to grief other people. Uh, with the disco being the one that would be griefing other people uh, who are trying to do something that maybe like they're trying to do a quest line and they're in Xenos and oh god there's like hideous disco stuff everywhere not that it's hideous uh, but anyways but I think that is why I think it you can't use them there because it's a pot uh, I can fix that but it that's something that'll be a client side it'll need a client side element to it as well so it won't go in for the patch in time for your thing but I'll tell you what, I'll go fix that for a future one, because, yeah, it sucks that you can't. I know Xenos, as you were saying, was uh, one of the most beautiful scenes out there. 
It's no fun if you can't have that. Uh, I do have something special that I'm working on as a Christmas present to people. We'll see how it goes. Uh, this is something, and you guys are the first to hear this. Uh, well, except for the people on the team. I was going to make it a surprise, but I'm too excited about to make it a surprise. But i uh, try and get you guys a Christmas present that I can work on uh, just as kind of on the weekend time or something like that. That this Christmas, more than any in the past, uh, feels like one. This, this I'll just go ahead and set the get you guys thinking about something first. Hold on, before I get back to that point. Uh, this to me, it feels like this whole situation feels like the uh, Monty Python, the Holy Grail scene, like where the guy's charging. I think it's Lancelot. Is charging across the field and they show him and he's like charging and he's charging and he's charging he's not making any progress charging charging and all of a sudden bam he's on him again if you haven't seen monty python the holy grail shame on you but if you have seen it you probably remember that scene but he's charging across there charging across and then boom he's on him uh that's kind of what it feels like this christmas maybe for vr stuff uh it feels like this may be the christmas where it's been one of those things for like 10 christmases in a row or whatever maybe more Feels like VR is like, this is going to be the VR Christmas. This is going to be the VR Christmas. This is going to be the VR, like where enough, they get enough foothold that it takes, you know, grabs hold. Uh, and I mentioned this partially in response to the uh, uh, the Xenos thing and the dance party stuff. Because uh, that's one of the uses for it. But it does feel like this might be the Christmas where VR actually takes hold. Uh, and there's like enough of a base and it quits just being a like, something devs play with and you know companies throw money at because they want to be part of the next big thing but it hasn't been the next big thing so uh but uh the only thing i'm planning on doing is just trying out this is something i actually did this if you go back and watch really old streams oh my goodness i'm trying to think how old maybe four years old five years old uh, i actually built a vr version of the game five years ago or something like that uh but all I'm planning on doing, and again, to turn on true VR and make it a true VR game, which I know some people have requested, why don't you make it VR? Well, can you imagine like mapping, trying to map controls to little thumb thingies and the handheld things and all that stuff? Uh, the only thing I'm looking at doing is trying to get the VR working so you can watch the game in a helmet. And again, this still means you're going to be, I hope you're a touch typer and you know your keyboard really well. Because you're not going to be able to see your keyboard, and I know there's a million keys to use. So, uh, but anyways, it would just be getting trying to get the it working in the VR. Uh, and again, I mention this now because that's one of those things I imagine it for. Is if you think it is uh, nauseating to go to one of these parties, have all the crazy stuff on, the crazy outfits, uh, disco potions, VFX going off everywhere, fireworks, whatever, and then you drink at the party like in-game drink and you get the whole like screen now imagine that in vr you will be throwing up on your keyboard <laughs> so it's not really going to be a vr thing uh, all i'm going to do is i know some people have asked for it and i think there's some small situations where it would be fun if you could just like pick up your vr helmet and put it on so we'll see tree walk yes absolutely balancing stuff uh th if this it ends up being more than just a fix uh, I've looked into it, uh, and I believe I just there's just a couple of shaders I have to fix and a couple of things I have to add to it. So we're talking about time investment to get it going of less than a day. If it's less than a day, I think for the uh, people who have VR, I think it's worth it. The bigger thing, again, is I know you guys, what you really want is you want more players in game, more players in game. I also want more players in game. I think for the, uh, the free PR that it can it can uh, give us uh, I think it's one of those things worthwhile if I can get VR in there even if in a limited form and it brings another you know 100 players active players to the game due to some news story run on to me that is an absolute massive victory for uh, for things and again won't be that big of an investment in time yes balancing creatures absolutely a bigger deal there's a million things that are important though and we just again we got to we got to weigh them. And this is one that, again, my, I feel like my time, uh, I think I probably said 100 things good about them this release, but uh, having Elgari on, on board to help lift some of that load off of me so I can go do that type of balance stuff uh, and dig into some of the metrics is absolutely huge for me. So, ah. 
Let's see. Uh, I'm looking for one last question to answer here before I kick off. Did I do the final thing? Let me call off the last prizes. I'll answer one more question. I'll do it in the other order, though. Let's see. Uh, I'll answer this one from Mad Chef of Xenos. Any updates you can share on Big Cats? Uh, so there's going to be a new creature type going live soon. Damon promises. Uh, I think he realized he bit off more than he could chew and piling stuff on uh, his already busy schedule. But there should be a new creature type. It will not be big cats. But I'm hoping the big cats, uh, we've been honest about it. There's a lot of great models out there, professional quality cat models. And we plan on those being a cat model type, uh, one that we buy from the store, I mean, and using those cat models and getting them in game. Uh, Damon has uh, frowned at me anytime I've said this. Uh, but. Uh, the big thing on it is there's going to be some animation work that needs to be done. But we do still expect that to be one of the next creatures that comes up uh, because it does bring a lot of stuff with it. For one, it's got some new creature, you know, some new combat abilities. It'll have some interesting things to fight with it, uh, ways to fight it in terms of it having some, you know, bleed effects and rake attacks uh, and also being like a fast predator type thing. But it also comes with the bonus of obviously there's going to be, you know, tameables and stuff like that. And now with the mount system, it's another one that could fall right in line with the making it a cat, big cat mount. Because uh, what would be cooler than riding like a saber tooth tiger around as your mount? Uh, but yes, cats are very are on the very short list in terms of things get done. We have one that again I don't think he's announced it yet, so I'm not going to announce it. We may have announced it on a past stream and I forgot, but uh, it is a new creature completely from scratch, custom for uh, episode two maps that fits with the themes. Ah, all right, now I'm going to read off some prizes, and then I'm going to do a quick song. Anybody have some songs? Uh, oh, I had uh, a request. I'll go see. OMG, no, Chris. This isn't WoW. Does WoW have uh, cat mounts? We're not allowed to have mounts, just uh, cat mounts, just because they have them. We were planning on adding big cat mounts and uh, wolf mounts and other stuff. I don't want to not do something cool just because uh, WoW did it. Let's see. All right, let me read off the last round of prizes here. Uh, the Yule card 2018 five pack goes to Rowena Roseberry. Winter pattern glass floor lamp three pack goes to Manic Miner. Ornate sled goes to Warlord Borat. Mandalar, thank you, thank you. Also, Zythar, thank you. And Dark and Obscuro and Shadow Vice and Shadow Vice and Shadow Vice. Oh, those are one bits. You trolling me. Uh, HT Genie UK, thank you for the resub and Mandalar again and Mandalar again. Mand you're amazing, Mandalar. You too, Grumpy. Uh, but let's see. Ornate Sled goes to Warlord Borat. I already read that one. Uh, Ornate Replenishing Snowball Box 2015 goes to Botox. And last but not least, the final of the five Icy Ancient Stone Cathedral goes to Stymie Savage Fury. All right, now i got to do two things here since I'm left without my partner in crime. Uh, by the way, he offered to come on tonight, and I told him, if you have plans, do your plans. Uh, but, yeah, everybody's kind of, I think everybody took the week, at least part of the week off last week, and everybody came back, and now they're all stressed because next Thursday is lockdown, and everybody thought they had more time. Yep, two short releases in a row. Sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me go find someone to raid, and while I do, I will be singing them a beautiful song. Oh, there's my echo going. La 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 la. Let's see. Oh, we got this. Uh, Shaner Niner, you you have you definitely are owed this one. Uh, I'm gonna give Shaner Niner. I don't think I've seen you raid uh, up here for me to raid before, and you're in a place with lava. That's awesome. We're absolutely going to Shaner Niner. You guys should also be appreciative of that because he I think he's probably got you guys at least a couple of extra rounds totally by himself on a couple of these streams. So thank you, Shane or Niner, is what you should be saying. Uh hold on a second though. Let me get some uh I think they were trolling me, and I'm okay with that. I enjoy being trolled sometimes. Uh, 
uh, but someone had requested some Queen. I have some uh, music in game that someone keeps sending me for Queen that I'm supposed to be playing on a musical instrument in game, and I keep forgetting to do it on live because that's where I have it. Let me get the raid going there. Speaking of trolling, here's the troll for you guys as me singing for you guys. If you guys don't know, I will sing for you. It is horrible. Uh, but you can do it kind of as a punish your friends. It's kind of like when you're at the bad, uh, the Mexican restaurant, you pay for the mariachi guys to come out and serenade them. Huh? So it's kind of like that type thing. Uh, but we will be rating Shane or Niner on the way out. If you can tolerate my music through the end, we will be rating him. If not, you are welcome to go join anyone you want to. Guys, again, uh, be safe. Be careful out there. Thank you so much for the support. We will be having the release in a little under two weeks, 13 days. Uh, already got a ton of good bugs fixed, some quality of life stuff in there. We'll be getting some more in next week and the week after because our usually on lockdown, all we do after lockdown is fix bugs, which is what we're going to continue doing. Uh, there will be some new content. The Well of Alder map will be going live, but we're probably going to push it to QA. It'll be on live, but you guys can't get there. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, but we'll have it on accessible on QA. Uh, so we can get a lot of testing in because it does have some big boss fights in it. It will be prone to some bugs. There's actually, I think there's a couple different ways you can go through it. Uh, one of, at least one of which is uh, semi-platforming, which again, I keep screaming like, no, our players are old and suck at platforming. Uh, but there will probably be some platforming. We're trying to mix in some other stuff too, like some wind zones and some storms. In addition to the combat, some new items, lots of stuff in there. But anyways, that will be going live, but it will be going live on QA and probably not be accessible uh, on live. We'll see. Maybe uh, more stuff will get done and we'll actually move it to live uh, before the end of the year a, or as a Christmas present. Uh, but anyways, let's do the raid for Shaner Niner. We're coming at you, Shaner Niner. <coughs> While that's going on, now time for your punishment. I'll get the microphone close to my mouth like I'm serious about this. She keeps Moe to Shando in a pretty cabinet. Let them eat cake, she says. Just like Marie Antoinette, a building remedy for Khrushchev and Kennedy at any time. An invitation you can't decline. Caviar and cigarettes, well versed in etiquette, extraordinarily nice. She's a killer queen. Gunpowder and gelatine. It's one of those things where songs where you never knew the lyrics. You'd heard it like a thousand times, but you never knew the lyrics. Dynamite with... I'll move up an octave too. Dynamite with a laser beam. No, it's horrible. Guaranteed to blow your mind. <sighs> Failing. I do not practice these ahead of time. I know that'll shock you guys out there. She's a killer queen. No, oh, it's horrible. I'm going to give your money back, Marcus. <laughs> that was horrible uh but yes that's the lyrics there that's uh, that threw me off there the she's a killer queen gunpowder and gelatine dynamite with a laser beam i knew that part insatiable and appetite oh this is horrible no guys i can't do it anymore i should have had a drink or something before i got on here just miserable i'm gonna practice next time i keep saying that but i'm really gonna do it let's go raid <laughs> All right. 